All right. Well, foodies, welcome to the BDSM podcast, the booze, desserts, smoke, and meats. I am Professor Porkline. I'm here with my co-host. The Meat Viking. And we are continuing the journey still, man. We are almost done, and uh, we're getting through the O's. So mm-hmm. we are at Oklahoma today. We are. Which always reminds me of Jackass. You remember that the first movie? Oh, uh, it's been so long since I've seen it. Oh, man, I'll never forget it. I think it was in the first movie, or it was, I, I think. And uh, they had Preston, the big fat guy. Mm-hmm. And he got dominated by two dominatrixes. <laughs> And oh. his safe word was Oklahoma. And they like whipped the shit out of him. And he's like, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Nice. <laughs> so at least Oklahoma, you're you're known for that. Yeah. But uh so yeah, we are coming across, but uh safe word for today. Exotic. Like you said, we, we came up with exotic because obviously Joe Exotic, you can't can't go wrong with that. Yep. Be and wrong to do an to Oklahoma go... episode without mentioning the Tiger King. Yeah. Did you happen to watch all of that? I watched the whole first season. I did not watch the second season. Um, the second season is just as bad in terms of like who is getting screwed and what. <laughs> nice. So check it out if you're if you're bored one weekend. I think there's only like four or five episodes. Nice. So but, I uh, I hear you got something stirring over there. I do, man. So I uh, I got a couple beers. Now I wish I would have had this when I was in uh, when we were in Kentucky in that state mm-hmm. because it would have been great to talk about a Kentucky beer. But I wound up getting some beers from the mother-in-law. She took a trip and one of my favorite breweries, uh, Mirror Twin. So today I am doing their Gold Runnings. Nice. It's a little play on Cool Runnings because it's got uh, a bobsled and a bunch of hops. And they all have goggles on. It looks like they're going down the uh, the trail. So, And it's <laughs> uh, feel the rhizome, feel the rhyme, get on up. It's hop sled time. Uh, that's so such it's a, a cold good IPA. Movie. I know, right? It's a it's a cold IPA brewed with mosaic incognito and mosaic hops. So it's six percent and it's pretty pretty smooth. Yeah. If you are ever feeling down on yourself and feeling like you're about to quit, just watch Cool Runnings. That is the <laughs> definition of do not quit movie. Uh so many good quotes off of that one. Oh yeah. Well, I heard you crack something open. So, what did you? Uh, what did you get? Sparkling water. Sparkling water. Yep. <laughs> okay. I went on a five mile hike today this morning. Well, damn. Yep, and it's gonna be. It was fifties and sixties all last week, and this week the coldest day is gonna be like eighty two, and so I am just prehydrating. <sighs> Yeah, man, it's been the 90s where I'm at this week. Yeah. So So. I did have a weird life out-of-body experience today. Okay. So I was going to Costco, and while I was coming out, some guy in the matching Jeep color of mine, but his was four-door, and his hard top matched uh, his color, was pulling in right next to me. And it's this guy, and he had Ontario plates on, and it was like same body build, same body type. He just had about like 20 to 30 years on me. And he's like, yeah, I got this Jeep so I could tow my RV behind it so I can go hunt bear in Ontario with my friends. And I was like, is this my life in 30 years? Am I going to be that happy? <laughs> <laughs> Time to get a camper, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, although I've always been one of those RV stands for ruins vacation, but if I'm out there hunting bear, I think I could take a little safety and luxury. True. So that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's hit it off with Oklahoma, man. Do you want to start us off with something that you found? Yeah, I'm actually going to start us off with the barbecue because it's in that like southern barbecue belt region and. One of the most iconic foods from Oklahoma is their barbecue. And I did a little bit of research to see how this would be um, more different from like a Texas-based barbecue. And the main thing I saw 
is that Texas barbecue is mainly pork based or sorry, sorry, beef based. And Oklahoma is pork based, which is a little weird because Oklahoma has a lot of cattle ranches. Um, and then another difference I saw is that Texas, when they do ribs, they tend to use um, pork ribs, but that Oklahoma does beef ribs. So, oh, okay. Yeah. At first, I was going to say, man, did you mix that up a little bit? But I can see with the uh, the ribs then. Yeah. Because I, I ended up doing a forum search to see like what the difference was. And one of the big things is like, why are my ribs in Texas only like four to five inches when in Oklahoma, they're like eight to nine inches. And I was like, oh, you have beef ribs, clearly. Yeah, I think that's what people don't realize. Beef mm -hmm. ribs are typically bigger, you know, yep. that eight to nine inch range. But the problem with it, though, is there's usually not a lot of meat on it. Yep. And the meat is usually a little bit tougher. Now, I I can probably think that once when you barbecue it down for 20 hours, slow and slow, I mean, it's going to melt off anyway. But when I used to work in my uh, restaurant when I was younger, I mean, there were people that would always turn down the beef ribs because they were they were uh, not as tender as yeah. the, the pork ribs. Mm -hmm. So now I've had some good beef ribs, so I can't say that that's – a big thing but yeah the the pork ribs are definitely a little bit smaller and they're more more tender mm -hmm. i wonder if that's just because of the pig you know i would assume so because you can't get bacon from a cow no but you can get steak and steak depending on the cut is pretty good that's true tender that's true i mean your filet like usually you can cut that with a fork yep so, so. the next thing i found was Oklahoma has a fried onion burger festival in El Reno, um, which is okay. home to the world's largest fried onion burger. And I'm going to screen share here to so you can see how big this thing is. Share screen. Like there are people standing near that and they make that burger and they make the how people look small. The fuck? Yeah. How the fuck? Largest fried onion burger. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. I wonder how how many pounds of of beef is on that. I don't know. And then how many onions? Probably, I'm gonna say more than three. <laughs> more than three is <laughs> a safe bet. Like if we're yeah, going off huge. Jeopardy rule or not Jeopardy, but Price is Right rule, Price is Right rules, we know you always bid under. Yeah, I know, right? As long as you don't go over. Yep. So. Man, I couldn't imagine going to that festival, though. Nah. Like, I've been to festivals before where they do shit like that, you know, where they make the biggest, uh, you know, pizza or garlic burger or whatever the hell it is. So I can only imagine going to a festival like that where they're making a big-ass onion burger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what else is on that? It doesn't say, but in the picture I posted, she's clearly pouring mustard on that. So let's see if I can pull up a location here. Okay. Um, It looks like just burger, cheese, and fried onions, man. And sometimes they serve it with pickles. Well, geez. Okay. Yeah. So... Okay, well, shit. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? What's that? Every now and again, if you go to Burger King at a certain type of year, they do like a caramelized onion burger. Man, I haven't been to the the King of Burgers in a hot minute, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, I mean, we've got one in town. Actually, we've got two. But the one is on the south side of town. I, I'm never down that way. And then the other one, I mean, there's there's other restaurants that I usually frequent instead of making the left to go across the street. So yeah. But so all right, I'll take your word for it, though. Right now, I will hop over to a side that I know you and I both like, and that's fried okra. Yeah, I saw that fried okra was one of their main dishes. Mm -hmm. 
So I wonder if it's a little different than what I get here in Texas or where I've been other places. I like, haven't been able to pull up anything. All I know is it's cornmeal flour and buttermilk that they use in theirs yeah. to fry it. So Okay. Um, another thing that we've memed on several times, uh, in Oklahoma, they're called calf fries, but <laughs> they are known as Rocky Mountain Oysters. So we did talk about that in what the Colorado episode. Yep. About Rocky Mountain oysters. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to uh want to listen to some other stuff that talks about, you know, some bull balls, <laughs> then go up to the Colorado one. But yeah, it's, I, it doesn't surprise me that they have the same thing because you figure with all the cow and cattle that they've got, I mean, it's just uh, you know, and because of the Indian influence as well. I mean, they wind up using every part of the cow, so yep. I can see that that being uh, a thing that's a normal stuff. Mm -hmm. So now another topic that we've talked about before that's apparently huge in Oklahoma is their fried catfish. So okay, now they serve theirs with hush puppies and coleslaw, so that's already a one in my book. So. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of places even down here, like especially in Louisiana, that serve theirs with coleslaw and hush puppies too. Well, you got to think. I also live up north where we're not allowed to have good food. <laughs> That's true. So <laughs> I got that good old southern hospitality cooking, man. Yeah. I was talking to a lady the other day, and she was making pork chops in her house. She's uh, from Louisiana. And I could smell it outside of her house. And I was like, oh, that, that smells like, you know, I want the pearly gates to smell like that. So. Yeah. Did you ask her for a, for a bite? They weren't done yet. <laughs> oh man. That's a shame. Yeah. yeah. You should uh, go on your route a little bit later for that one. And then be I, like, should. Hey. <laughs> I should. I should. Hey, you mind if I, uh, you know, grab one, please? Right. So <laughs> now we've mentioned this briefly before when we were talking about barbecue, but with Oklahoma being a major ranching state, you can't really get any steaks fresher than, you know, kind of from the source. And apparently they recommend Sooner Steaks is, um, I'm assuming the cattle ranch that these get slaughtered from. And they look absolutely delicious. So, but I know you can get like Oklahoma City steaks um, or Oklahoma Steakhouse. When I lived in Texas, there would be like a van that would drive through and they would sell like almost like a Schwanch delivery system for their steaks. Okay, yeah, man, I remember the Swans dude when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it was always cool because they they had the best French toast sticks. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I know it's not real. steaks. I know it's not steaks, but we can get back to it. But man, when that Swans guy came down, it was always like, yes, we we're getting French toast sticks, and boom, yep. we're gonna eat those things within like two days. Yep. So that was always awesome. <laughs> like if you're ever trying to kidnap me. There are two ways you can do it. You could do it with a steakhouse, um, like minivan, or you could just drive down the street and use a little air horn for free ammo, and I will probably get kidnapped. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's always like this, you know. I, f I forget one one lady was saying how. This this woman approached her with a dog, and she was like, oh, how cute is the puppy? And it was like, oh, I've got the brother and sister in the car. Do you want to come see him? And it was like, yeah. It's like Ted Bundy would have loved my ass. Yep. So there's a – my wife showed me this one a long time ago. It was on TikTok. And this guy, his daughter's coming around the corner, and she's like, dad, some guy just asked to slap my ass for handfuls of candy. And keep in mind, like, the daughter's probably 18 to 20. 
And the next thing you know, you see the dad go, well, I'm going to go talk to him about that. And then he runs around the corner with like two handfuls of candy. He goes, don't tell your mom. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I know uh, you mentioned the steaks and how it would be delivered. Like, we don't have any of that, right? There's no guy that comes around in a, in a Schwann's guy truck. And it's like, hey, I've got, you know, filet mignon for you. Here's the price. Mm -hmm. We need to have that. I think that would be a great addition to the U.S. <clears throat> well, there, there are Schwann's, and I know that because my wife actually interviewed to work for Schwann's. Um, but they're not as prevalent as they used to be. And I think... Um, how do I word this? I think DoorDash and things like Grubhub have kind of ruined business for them. Uh, see, but they were the ones that already cook everything, though. True. I think, I think bigger grocery stores like Costco and Sam's Club probably took them out of business because you can buy in bulk. Uh, that's fair. You know. You know what? If they lost to Costco, I'm not even going to blame Schwann's man because it's yeah, hard. Certainly. It's hard to beat Costco so but so i'm gonna jump into one thing and, and apparently they've got festivals all over the the place there in oklahoma and one i realized too and it's a food is uh fried rattlesnake i love me some so fried snake they do an annual rattlesnake festival or roundup in oklahoma mm -hmm. and a apache is in one of them they have a couple other cities too or towns like God damn! Can you imagine just having a a festival surrounding rattlesnakes to where they cook them up? They probably got freaking boots you can buy. They got belts and shit. Yeah, but sounds I, like I need to trip to Oklahoma around that time of year. Yeah, I've never had fried rattlesnake, but I've had um, jerky before. Yep. You know, there's always those places that have the wide variety of jerkies, and you get gator, elk, and whatnot. Yep. So I wound up having some of that. So have you had fried rattlesnake before? I've had fried snake. I do not remember if it's rattle. It's probably it's probably close enough. Yeah. Right? Like I'm sure that there's really no difference between like a black mamba and a rattlesnake, you know? Right. Other than if it bites you, how dead you are. <laughs> the other day I was mowing my lawn and I uh a copperhead was in the, the bushes there. Oh, I almost ran him over, and the copperhead was like only a f maybe about a foot, and I didn't know what it was at first. But I have a friend whose wife like studies this stuff, sent a picture, and immediately was like, "Oh, that's a copperhead." And I looked it up. I'm like, "Okay, they're venomous. Yeah, it bites me. I'm not. I'm not going to be. You know, I'm not going to die from it. Probably hurt like hell." And uh, I'm like, any way that you can get this out of my yard? <laughs> yeah. So some people will say um, rattlesnake tastes like chicken. Um, depending on what the snake's been eating will kind of dictate its taste. Kind of like how you don't want to eat wild hog because it's going to be very gamey. Yeah. Um, so. Bit well, of an acquired taste. Um, doesn't compete with alligator or crocodile by any means. So. I wouldn't think so. Um, one of the other things that I saw too, and I could go for one of these at any time of the year, but it's a frosted mug of root beer. Oh, I love me some, some so, frosted root beer. There's a place in Oklahoma city called Coit's and it's a drive-in. So they've got a couple locations, but I could go for a frosted mug of root beer at any time. That just seems like mm -hmm. you can have my money. Oh Yeah. So and I was person, actually, um, you know, I was gonna say that. go for it. Oh, uh, you can't really go wrong with like your root beer float either. Yes. And there's that ice cream place that's by me and I was passing them today and on their sign, they says, try one of our blended floats. And I was like, are you telling me you're going to take root beer and just blend the ice cream in it? So it's all yummy and frothy. I, I was half <laughs> tempted to stop. So. Why did it? Why did you not stop? 
because I was on my way to go on my hike today. Oh. Yeah. You could have got it on the way home. It probably would have been very refreshing. I ended up getting coffee instead. <laughs> well. <laughs> Nothing but going from a five-mile hike to getting coffee. Well, so <laughs> by the time I was coming home, my wife was going to be home. And I passed this place, and I always try to give them business because they're one of the few – like small businesses that I really like because it's a coffee shop. They get all their bakery stuff um, through local bakeries that brings them in. And they also sell tabletop board game stuff there too. And so like when I pick up paints, I go there. Um, And so when it's my day off and I'm out and about, I try and just, you know, give them a couple of bucks to support them. And my wife really likes the teas that they have, and they have a wide variety of tea. So she was going to be home. I called her if she wanted anything and just did a little two-stop or a one-stop shop. So. All right. Fair enough. Yep. Well, there's a place that I think I would enjoy, and I almost – I don't know if I would go 100% for this one because it reminds me of uh, that spaghetti chili. What was it? The Skyline, Skyline. chili. And uh, they do kind of something similar. And this guy's been doing it for 99 years. Ike's Chili House. And they've got a three-way chili. So we've got spaghetti, red beans, and chili. And you can do regular, special, or double, triple portions. Hmm. And I guess it's standing room only. So you can come in, get your stuff, and leave. Which, if you're looking at a business model, that's the best way to do it. Because then you don't have to pay servers. You don't have to pay any of the shit. People just buy their stuff, get the fuck out. Yep. <laughs> Chinese restaurants like that, the takeout restaurants, have it. Like, they have, met, they have it made. Hmm. <laughs> so, speaking of kind of, well, on the vein of Skyline Chili... Um, something I think you and I both like is Sonic. Oh yeah. Was Sonic created there? In 1953, 1953, the first Sonic drive-in opened in Shawnee, Oklahoma. So it was originally named Top Hat, but changed to Sonic in 1959. So, and apparently they're tater tots and limeades, which I love both of those things from Sonic have always been favorites on the menu. I like their uh, ocean water. Okay, that's a good one. That one's one of my favorites. So, and then the wife likes uh, the cherry, uh, cherry limeade, I think. Mm -hmm. And she usually will get, um, not the tots, uh, the jalapeno poppers. Yes, yes. No. But it's 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 funny when you say that though, because if you look at what Sonic originally was, it was like the, the drive up where people on roller skates bring you your food and you yep. eat in your car. But now they have that drive through. And I don't know about you, but the one in town here, that damn thing is always backed up to the drive through and people order like off the menu. Instead of getting like, oh, give me a large, you know, ocean water. And then I can be on my way like, oh, no, I'm going to have a whole fucking meal and I'm going to wait for it because you have to cook all that shit. Yep. It's like, dude, just pull into the car park. Yep. No, I'm with you. I actually like using the carport when I'm there if I have the time. So, for instance, um, one of my favorite things to get from Sonic is their four, foot-long quarter-pound Coney dog. Okay. Um, and then – much as how Dairy Queen has their Blizzard, I feel like you get more value to money out of the Sonic Blast, which is a very similar type thing. So, yeah, don't they do a whole bunch of deals too, like happy hour? Oh yeah, like they from, have usually from like um, three to five. It's like two bucks for a large one. Yep. So, and they've got like strawberry limeade, cranberry limeade. Um, They've got your ocean water, which is blue flavoring uh, with a tangy flavor and some coconut. So they've got like four or five different other types of limeades, a whole bunch of different types of lemonades. 
If you haven't had Sonic, I'd recommend giving it a shot. Yeah, let's hope they don't, you know, screw your shit up, though, because I could easily see someone be like, oh, I've never been to Sonic. Let's check this out. And then they have to wait 45 minutes for some garbage stuff. And oh, yeah. I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. I know one time. Oh, God, I don't remember how many we ordered. They, it's not chicken nuggets. I forget what it's called at Sonic. But my wife and I, we both kind of had like a bad day at work. And okay. when we were living in Texas, we're like, we want 100 piece jumbo popcorn chicken. And it was so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, imagine going through the drive thru and be like, I need a 100 piece popcorn chicken. And yep. this motherfucker is like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we were those people one day. I'm not proud of it, but we were those people one day. Oh, that's funny. Yep. <laughs> so now I think this is something you and I both like. And another iconic food of Oklahoma is cornbread. Yeah, cornbread. Oof. Mm. I've had a variety, variety of butter? different cornbreads. Yep. Well, so that's the thing. I've had a variety of cornbreads before. I've had ones where you can throw a little honey and butter on it, and it's good. But I've also had ones that have jalapeno in it. Like, that's the southern cooking mm -hmm. of it, you know? And I've had ones that had corn in it as well. So it, I guess it really depends on which cornbread you're going to get. Because if I'm going to have the jalapeno one, I think I'm going to put some butter and just eat it that way. Yep. If I'm going to get a plain piece of cornbread, I'm going to wind up just putting some honey, some butter. Sometimes I might even put some jelly on it too. Mm -hmm. So, so what a man! I have it's been a while since I've been a little bit up north and gotten some cornbread. So, it, what is it like up there? Is is it just a regular? You know, it depends piece of on who makes or it. What? It depends on who makes it. Because okay. like. If you get somebody who was raised in the South, you might get lucky and you got like the jalapeno and cheese cornbread. If you get somebody who wasn't made from the South, you'll get like two day old, hard. Like you can tell you're trying to make cornbread, but it's not cornbread. You know? Okay. Yeah. You know, it's not a bad way to use that as a frying method either. Like no. take the batter. Yep. Um, you know, dip some hot dogs in it or whatever. You got yourself a nice corn dog mm -hmm. or uh, dip whatever the hell you want in it and fry that bad boy up. And chances are it's going to be pretty good. Right. So it's – the batter is usually a lot thicker. So yeah. it makes it a little bit easier for that to kind of bind to whatever you're, you're, you're frying up. I wonder if they do but, that for their fried catfish. Ah, man, Maybe. I could say there's a possibility of that, but I also think that you probably have a better chance because catfish is usually uh, pretty easily to to break. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to you want something that would be able to at least keep that that crispiness to it, mm -hmm. right? Like if I'm sticking that into a a thick ass batter like cornbread batter, I'm not going to be I'm going to be pulling some of that up, and some of that catfish is going to be stuck in the batter, you know. I agree. Well, so I, it's probably good, but I don't know if that's something that they would use. Yeah. I got one last thing I want to touch on for Oklahoma, and that okay. is fried pies. Yeah, they've got a, a bunch of different pies, man. Yep. So Arbuckle Mountain is the brand they recommend. Started out in the small town of Springer, Oklahoma, where Maud Pletcher's recipe was handed down and perfected with her nine children out and other farmers throughout the area now it looks like there were some issues in the 70s where texaco leased the land and built a filing station um and then they had to like kind of get the land back in the 80s and they ended up reopening up this fried pie shop remembering their mother's fried pies so they placed them on the menu and Sure enough, through the years, this has kind of stayed uh, home. 
home safe recipe and i've never had a fried pie before but looking at their menu like they've got cherry peach pineapple blackberry apple pecan blueberry um they've got that same variety of pies with no sugar added they have cream pies so you can get like a peanut butter chocolate (laughs) lemon vanilla and then they've got savory pies and it looks like bacon, egg, and cheese, Polish sausage and potato, chicken and veggie. They have a pizza style, a Tex-Mex, and a spinach, mushroom, and potato pie. So I am all for that. So I would take any of those, 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But to go along with that, and I actually just found this, that there's a a Tulsa-based company called Bama Companies. Okay. And and what they do is they're a commercial food base where they make all these products for all the big wigs. So if you've ever had an apple pie for McDonald's. Yeah. They make that. Oh, nice. Uh, They also do the biscuits for the breakfast. Mm -hmm. They make that. Uh, if you go to KFC, they've got the Apple Minis. They make that and Taco Bell empanadas and Pizza Hut dough. So interesting. Yeah, all the stuff that all these people make for you know these fast food restaurants. This commercial company is based out of Tulsa, and they they do all of that. So that's kind of cool to kind of think about that. Hey, you got all these freaking pies. That are made in Oklahoma, but then there's this commercial one that says, you know what, we're going to take that, elevate it, give it to all these fast food companies. Right. So nothing beats that apple pie from uh, McDonald's, though. Yeah, it's a hard beat. Although I will admit, I think I would prefer an Arby's turnover. Ooh, see, I don't have Arby's in town, so I can't remember the last time I went to one. But... I will have to take your word for it, and next time I go to Arby's, if I see one, I'll have to get a, a Apple turnover there. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's all I had for Oklahoma. I think that's pretty good, too. Mm-hmm. Was this episode exotic enough for you, foodies? <laughs> well, we hope so. Right. Let us know, uh, how do you feel about fried pies? What do you think of barbecue? Is Texas the only way to go? And uh, would you eat rattlesnake? Let us know down in the comment section below. And I have been the Meat Viking with my wonderful co-host. Professor Porkloin. See you in the next one. All right.